This is Professor Russell James coming to you from Texas Tech University. Welcome to today's lecture from Visual Plan Giving, an introduction to the law and taxation of charitable gift planning. Welcome to Income Limits on Charitable Deductions, Part 2, Gifts to Public Charities. This is Professor Russell James. The highest share of income that may be deducted using charitable deductions is 60%. This highest limit is reserved for gifts of cash going to a public charity, government, or operating private foundation. Because gifts to governments or operating private foundations are rare, the remainder of these lectures will simply refer to gifts to public charities. Note that the typical private foundation is a non-operating private foundation. In other words, it simply holds assets and makes distributions to public charities, but it does not actually run nonprofit ventures such as schools, hospitals, or churches. In the remainder of these lectures, the term private foundation will refer technically to this most common type of private foundation, the non-operating private foundation. These lectures will also refer generically to income. Technically, the definition of income for charitable income limitation purposes is adjusted gross income for the year of the gift, excluding any net operating loss carryback. But no one wants to listen to adjusted gross income for the year of the gift, excluding any net operating loss carryback 300 times, so these lectures will simply use the term income. Different income limitations apply to different charitable transfers, depending upon the nature of the gift and the nature of the charity. The highest limit, 60% of income, applies only to gifts of cash to a public charity. This is given the highest income limitation because it is the most favored asset, that is cash, being given to a favored charitable entity, that is a public charity. There are no extra tax benefits from giving cash for example, no avoidance of capital gains taxes, and no need to estimate its value, thus no room for valuation manipulation. So it is the most favored asset. Public charities are generally favored in tax law as compared with private foundations. That general concept is applied here in that the 60% income limitation is available only for gifts of cash to public charities, not for gifts of cash to private foundations. As in other areas of charitable planning, the rules for gifts of cash are relatively straightforward, but the rules for gifts of property can become more complex. The general rule is that deductions from charitable gifts of non-cash property made to a public charity can reduce a taxpayer's income up to 50%. This 50% level for non-cash gifts is reserved for public charities and does not apply to private foundations. However, deductions for some types of long-term capital gain property, even if given to a public charity, will be limited to 30% of income. Although not discussed in these lectures, there are also special rules for giving qualified conservation easements, allowing farmers to have a 100% income limitation for such gifts. To begin with, gifts of any non-cash property treated as ordinary income given to public charities can be deducted up to 50% of income. As with gifts of cash, there are no extra tax benefits from giving ordinary income property because it is valued at the lower of cost basis or fair market value. Thus here, a moderately favored asset, that is, ordinary income property, is not long-term capital gain, being given to a favored organization, that is, a public charity, results in the highest income limit for non-cash property of 50%. Several types of non-cash property will be treated as ordinary income if sold, and all will receive a 50% income limitation when given to a public charity. The first example of ordinary income property is creations by the donor. Thus, if a donor were to build cabinetry for the office of a public charity and donate that cabinetry to the charity, the deductions for this type of gift would be subject to the 50% income limitation. Of course, the deduction for this type of gift is limited to the cost of materials, even if fair market value is much higher. Other gifts of creations by the donor could include examples such as artwork or a manuscript. Inventory from a business is also ordinary income property. 
In cases where this inventory is given to a public charity, such gifts would be subject to the highest income limitation for non-cash property of 50%. For example, if the owner of a local hardware store, a sole proprietorship, were to donate cans of paint from the store's shelves to a public charity, the owner's deduction would be subject to the 50% income limitation. As before, the amount of the deduction would be the lower of the cost basis in the paint or its fair market value. This relatively lower valuation is somewhat offset by the ability to use the highest income limitation. The final major category of property taxed as ordinary income is short-term capital gain property. This is any capital gain property held for one year or less prior to its sale or transfer to the charity. These types of assets are valued at the lower of cost basis or fair market value. Given this less advantageous valuation, such gifts are limited only by the highest non-cash income limitation of 50%. All of these different types of non-cash property, works created by the donor, inventory, and short-term capital gain property, are all given the same income limitation of 50% when transferred to a public charity. They are all treated the same because they all fall into the category of non-cash property other than long-term capital gain property. Why is long-term capital gain property treated differently than everything else? Gifts of long-term capital gain property come with a potential double tax advantage to the donor. First, the donor is allowed to deduct the full fair market value of the property transferred to charity. Second, the donor never had to pay any taxes on the appreciation, that is the growth, of the property which generated the tax deduction. This combination of tax advantages does not apply to gifts of other assets, such as cash or ordinary income property, which is valued at the lower of its basis or fair market value. Although the tax code allows this special benefit for gifts of long-term capital gain property, the income limitations lower the maximum amount of such deductions that can be used from this type of transaction in any one year. It might help to think of long-term capital gain property valued at fair market value as a less favored asset. When a donor gives this less favored asset to a favored recipient, such as a public charity, the income limitation is lowered to 30%. The favored or less favored terminology is not from the tax code, but may be a useful concept to help understand intuitively why the rules are as they are. For example, in order to get the highest income limitation of 60%, a donor must give the most favored asset, cash, to a favored charitable entity, for example, a public charity. Giving a moderately favored asset, for example, short-term capital gain property, to a favored charitable entity, for example, a public charity, results in a 50% income limitation. If a donor gives a less favored asset, that is long-term capital gain property valued at fair market value, to a favored charitable entity, a public charity, the income limitation is lowered to 30%. Similarly, if a donor gives any favored asset, for example, cash or ordinary income property, to a less favored charitable entity, for example, a private foundation, the income limitation is also lower to 30%. And finally, if a donor gives a less favored asset, for example, long-term capital gain property, to a less favored charitable entity, a private foundation, the income limitation is lowered to 20%. This concept reduces a range of complex rules to the simple equation of most favored gift plus favored recipient equals 60%. Moderately favored gift plus favored recipient equals 50%. Disfavored gift plus favored recipient equals 30%. Any favored gift plus disfavored recipient equals 30%. And finally, disfavored gift plus disfavored recipient equals 20%. Within this context, long-term capital gain property is a disfavored asset. 
but the reason it is disfavored is because it can be deducted at fair market value. So in many cases where long-term capital gain property given to a public charity must be valued at cost basis, it is no longer a disfavored asset. This means that gifts of long-term capital gain property to a public charity may be subject to either a 50% limit, usually when valued at cost basis, or a 30% limit, usually when valued at fair market value. Consider the gift of an acre of investment land where the donor purchased the land in 1990 for $600, and today it is worth $2,800. The gift of this land to a public charity would normally generate a charitable deduction of $2,800. The donor receives the benefit of a large deduction and also avoids paying capital gains taxes on the $2,200 of growth. This is more beneficial than selling the land, paying the capital gains tax, and then transferring the net proceeds to the charity as cash. Because the donor receives this special tax benefit, the tax code limits the amount of these deductions in any one year to 30% of the donor's income, requiring all additional such deductions to be carried forward into future tax years. If, however, the donor is willing to give up this special tax advantage and deduct only the basis of all long-term capital gain property gifts, then the donor is allowed to use such deductions from gifts to public charities up to 50% of his or her income. This special election applies to all long-term capital gain gifts made in a year. The donor may not select some gifts for this treatment and exclude others. In this case, the donor would be allowed to deduct only $600 for the gift of the acre of land to a public charity rather than $2,800. However, charitable deductions for these types of gifts to public charities could be used to reduce up to 50% of the donor's income. Obviously, taking this special election makes sense only for donors whose charitable deductions would otherwise be carried forward into future years. It may also be particularly attractive in cases where donors are giving long-term capital gain property that has appreciated very little. As discussed in the lectures on valuation of property gifts, tangible personal property has special rules for valuation. Tangible personal property includes all of those items that can be seen and touched and moved, such as the items in a typical garage or home, but would not include the garage or house itself because those are attached to the land, making them real property. Tangible personal property does not include financial instruments, such as stocks or bonds. These are intangible personal property items. Physically, stock or bond certificates are simply pieces of paper. They do not have value from their physical properties, but instead have value only from their intangible legal properties. Although tangible personal property has special rules for valuation, the general concept used with other long-term capital gain property applies here as well. If the gift of long-term capital gain tangible personal property to a public charity is valued at its basis, the deductions can be used up to 50% of income. If instead it is valued at fair market value, those deductions can be used up to 30% of income. Suppose a donor purchased an antique toy car in 1990 for $1, and today it is worth $25. If the donor gives the toy to a charity that will immediately sell it, the deduction for the gift will be limited to its basis, in this case $1. The deduction is limited to basis because the charity is not using the property itself in its charitable function, but is instead selling the property and using the proceeds. Although the donor receives a lower deduction, these deductions may be used to reduce up to 50% of the donor's income. Conversely, if the donor were to give the antique toy to a public charity that displayed it in its museum as part of its nonprofit function, then the donor could deduct the fair market value of the gift. Thus, the donor would receive a charitable deduction of $25 rather than 
Along with this greater deduction, however, comes the limitation that such deductions may reduce income by no more than 30% in any one year. Note that this fair market value deduction is available only for long-term capital gain tangible personal property. Short-term capital gain tangible personal property is valued at the lower of its basis or fair market value, regardless of use by the charity. Although the rules for long-term capital gain tangible personal property are different from those for other types of long-term capital gain property, the principle is similar. If a donor receives the higher, in other words, fair market value, deduction valuation for a gift to a public charity, then the donor receives the lower income limitation. This has been Income Limits on Charitable Deductions, Part 2, Gifts to Public Charities. Join us next time for Part 3, Gifts to Private Foundations.